Hi people, welcome to The Run Test, it's Kieran here, and in this video we're here to give you our multi-tester verdict on the carbon-plated trail shoe, the Hoka Tecton X2. It's built for speed on the trails, particularly racing. Is it any better than the first generation? Let's get straight into it. So first up, some quick details then. The Hoka Tecton X2 is a 5mm drop, 30mm in the heel and 25mm in the forefoot in the women's, and 32mm in the heel and 27mm in the forefoot in the men's. Now the Tecton X2 are heavier than the Tecton X, at 8.8 .8 ounces or 252 grams compared to the first gen's 8.5 ounces or 240 grams in a UK men's size eight and a half. They're pricier too, $225 up for 220 or 185 pounds in the UK. So let's give you a quick whip round and talk about what's new then. Well, the main changes here are to the uppers. These are new matrix uppers. They've got hydrophobic properties, AKA they're a bit more protected against water and they're much faster drying. They're quite dense and structured to help keep debris out. Otherwise, you've got the same mid-level heel collar padding here. You've got a flat leg gusseted tongue, which is the same. And there's some kind of minor overlay reinforcements across the toe, but not a lot. The midsole remains largely unchanged from the last generation. You've got the same parallel carbon plates. You've got the same stack of Profly X midsole foam, plus the same early stage Meta Rocker, flip them over, and the Vibram Mega Grip, which comes with, with light base, Outsole here also remains unchanged. They're also still the same four mil lugs. When it came to fit, I ran true to size and that's absolutely what I'd recommend. The fit is quite hugging. It's not the roomiest toe box, but the hold and the lockdown work well for me true to size. So that is what I'd go for. I got on really well with the fit of the Hoka Tech Next 2 in my normal size, which is UK size nine. That's a US 9.5 in this shoe though. And usually I'm a US 10, the way they convert it. So it does have a slightly shorter, more snug fit than lots of other shoes are partly because of that but i got on really well with it i do have a pretty narrow foot and i appreciate a nice locked in fit especially on a shoe that is geared towards racing and on the trails i like the hold it has around the midfoot for jinking through narrow trails that kind of thing so all in all i got on fire with the fit but it is quite a dialed in one if you're looking for a roomier more expansive uh, spacious feeling then you might look at going half a size up but i liked it and i do think the fit was slightly improved for me compared to the hoka tech next although i had no huge problems with the tech next from fit this is a little bit more dialed in In my run test, I've done well over 60 miles in these shoes. That includes a lot of lighter trails, a mix of paces, faster miles, ragged plods. I've also raced a more technical, wet, steep and slippy marathon at the Maverick Terex series. Now, I'm a fan of these shoes. They offer good comfort out of the box. The fit was secure on the heel and across the midfoot. I had no notable slipping, even on the steeper descents that I ran in that race. They hug a little tight, but overall I was really happy with the disappearing feel on the foot you get from these shoes. They're unfussy to put on. And after my five hour trail marathon, I had no blisters, hot spots, or nastiness. When it comes to the ride, I found them virtually identical to the original Tecton X2. Nothing really has changed here. And if you can get the Tecton X cheaper, I see no real reason to upgrade. Now they feel relatively light and agile for a trail shoe, and you do get a little bit of an extra pop from the combination of those plates and the Profly X foam. You get a good tick over from that rocker too. So it's not a huge difference over the Speedgoat 5 that I don't find, but it is there and it's a really welcome sensation, particularly when you're hitting the runnable bits. I think like flatter, compact groom trails and those road sections you might have at some points during an ultra. In fact, the road to trail skills of the Tecton X2 are excellent. Really, really thumbs up for those. I've done quite a few miles commuting to the trails in them and they run as well for me as some road shoes. Now, if you like your trail shoes more direct, these might not be for you. The stack of cushioning is perhaps a little high a little soft and it's not so connected to what's underfoot but personally i didn't have any issues moving over stones and roots and uneven terrain i found the stability was pretty good the grip coped well enough in all the dry conditions that i put them through but i wasn't 100 percent confident on those wet trails of the marathon test i did 75 percent of the time i was fine but on some of the difficult bits i felt i needed to hold back a bit that said so did plenty of other runners in all kinds of shoes but i think those four mil lugs perhaps won't cope with the most testing conditions. So I've done around 50k of running in the Hoka Tech to X2 and it really does feel a lot like the original shoe to me on the run and that's for the most part a good thing. I've gone on a nice variety of trails, um, all of it dry though, the UK has been very sunny of late so it's all been quite dry running. I've been on some hard packed dirt tracks in my forest, a bit of single track, some grass, some gravel and road to and from the forest and like I say it's all been uh, quite dry but I did get some wet runs in the older shoe, the Hoka Tecton X, and that did grip well on those hard surfaces in the wet. It's built more for hard surfaces, you can tell from the outsole, but 
These vinyl mount soles are pretty good. If you do hit a patch of soft and muddy ground, you're not going to fall over immediately, but there are certainly better shoes if you want a bit more bite into soft ground. But on everything I run on, grip very well. It's got a lot of confidence in the grip if you want to bomb down hills on like slightly loose gravelly surfaces in particular, dusty trails with that little inch of dust that sometimes makes it feel a bit skittish underfoot. The shoe grips really, really well on those when running at pace. I did my Sunday long run in the shoe last week and I was actually running over the route um, of uh, the ultra marathon I'm going to be doing later this year. And it is a really comfortable shoe to do long runs in. Anyway, that was only a 10 mile run, but I've also done longer runs in the old Tex and X. And I do like this midsole in that it is very comfortable to go over long distances in the shoe, despite the fact it's not a super maxed out stack. But at the same time, it does still feel nimble and lightweight. So you're getting that nice balance of protection um, and speed. For the first run in the shoe, I I think it feels a little bit stiff and uh, not that flexible, a bit dead underfoot, but it really quickly just softens a little bit and you start to feel a bit more of the bounce from the dual density midsole setup there. Uh, the plates come into play a little bit more, you get a bit more spring um, and it doesn't feel stiff at all. I think it's a nice flexible shoe for uneven ground. There's lots of very rutted ground around me at the moment and I don't love going on that kind of ground in stiff, like high stack carbon shoes, but it's okay in this because of the way the midsole is set up to be that little bit more flexible. Now, I've done a, a couple of progression runs in the shoe, working down from really easy paces down towards around my marathon pace, you know, in the 330s per K kind of pace. And that's an undulating ground, just rolling over some hills, bit of road up and down. And it feels really good for that. Like it's not a noticeably punchy shoe. It's not got the, the kind of wow factor you get with the soft, squishy road carbon shoes, but it is fast and you tick over really nicely in it. And it feels like it's quite easy to maintain good paces in the shoe, which is obviously what you're going to want if you're going to go very long in it. And it also feels nice for just mooching along at very easy paces, which again, you'll probably be doing in those longer ultramarathon events you are going to need to hold relatively slow paces for long, long periods, feeling comfortable, but also feeling the shoe just giving you a little bit of a tip forward, which I do think you get from the Texting X too. So it's all in all a really nicely balanced trail racing shoe, I think, that I have enjoyed using at a range of paces on a range of terrains. So my verdict then, like the first gen, this is a good, fast, nimble trail shoe, and I'd happily use it to race shorter trails, but also to tackle slower ultra distances too. I think I could happily run a mixed terrain 100 miler in these shoes in comfort. They're a bit narrow and hugging, so if you like a lot of room in the toe box, you may wish to half a size up. I enjoyed the ride fresh out of the box though, and they gave super comfort. There's a lot of cushion here that's great at soaking up the trail and protecting the feet deeper into longer efforts. And that cushion and plate combo is maybe not as good as if you like a more direct ride with more connection to the trail underfoot. Though I think the difference between this and non-plated shoes is still quite subtle. And there are lots of ultras where I think this shoe would be a great choice. Here in the UK, I'm thinking about things like the Centurion Running Race Series, the Threshold Series races, basically anything where you face less technical terrain and some road sections. But then we get into price. And good as I think these are, I think I'd be tempted to look at the first gen Tecton X before I bought these. And I also don't think there's that much to choose here over this versus the Speedgoat 5, which is 40 pounds cheaper. So that is another good alternative option. If it were my money, I'd go for those shoes first. If money doesn't matter though, then the Hoka Tecton X2 I think is an excellent trail option, particularly if you're looking to race. So Tecton X2 is a really good shoe. I think it's a slight improvement on the uh, Tecton X thanks to the new upper being a little bit more dialed in, but I think it's quite a slight improvement and the rise in price is a bit of a shame to see. So I certainly wouldn't uh, be against going and finding a deal on the Hoka Tecton X if you can and getting that shoe because the RRP is lower and it's gonna be in sales a bit more these days as well and you're getting the same underfoot experience. The upper change, you know, I think it's slightly for the better, but you know, it's not a deal breaker. I didn't have big problems with the upper on the Tecton X. If you did, then it has been redesigned with this new upper. So that's a nice thing. Uh, the ride is really good. I think it's a very impressive shoe. It probably is one of the top trail racing shoes available. I think looking at the other carbon shoes I've tested, I prefer it to the Summit Vective Pro from the North Face, which is a bit more of an intrusive shoe, which you don't always want on the trails. It's very rocker, it's a little bit softer. It feels very high stack, uh, even though I think it's got a similar stack height listed. Uh, and it doesn't have great grip on um, wet ground, whereas Tech Next 2 feels more accomplished on the trails. It's nimbler, it's more flexible, it gives you a little bit more confidence to tackle like winding trails and tricky trails, that kind of thing, while also being nice and punchy if you do hit a nice runnable stretch. So the Saucony Endorphin Edge, I think, has a slightly better midsole foam, a little bit more bounce from that, and I think it rolls really nicely when you get to runnable ground. Also has probably a little bit better bite for wet ground the Endorphin Edge does, but then I think the Tecton X2 is a little bit nimbler and faster up hills, so a bit of balance to all of those um, carbon racing shoes. Probably for me, the question still remains about how much benefit you get from the carbon shoes on the trails. Like there is a performance benefit to these shoes, but 
but they're really expensive. <laughs> and if I was looking at trails, I'd still personally, as someone who's not a very serious long distance racer on the trails, would be looking at things like the Hoka Speedgoat 5 or the Saucony Exodus Ultra 2 as probably more of the shoes I'd be looking for. I think they're, they're comfortable, they grip well, they're a lot cheaper than the plated shoes. I think you're getting high level of performance from those shoes as well for longer races. And I think the uptick in performance you get from the Tux Next 2 probably isn't quite enough for me to justify the big jump in price you have from what are really excellent trail shoes available for a fair bit less. But in and of itself, I think it's a fantastic shoe, great trail racing shoe. So there you have it. That's been our review of the new Hoka Tecta Next 2. We hope you found it helpful. As ever, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. If you're interested in how the Tecton X2 compares to the Speedgoat 5, there's a head-to-head -head appearing on the channel about now. So be sure to check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That is a massive help to us here at The Run Testers. And otherwise, we hope to see you again soon on the channel. Happy running, people, and good luck with whatever it is that you are trying to achieve.